It was just two months ago that the National Basketball Association's landmark $24 billion television and media deal was announced. We are thrilled to extend these highly successful relationships with our longtime partners and look forward to a new era of NBA basketball. The central facet was clear and exciting. The NBA will reach more fans in more places in more ways than ever before. Unquestionably, it's one of the most significant deals in sports broadcasting history, but also the culmination of a long and arduous journey for the NBA. You've got to pinch me. I must be dreaming. Because the league that David Stern inherited when he became commissioner in 1984 was a lot different than it is today. Only a handful of games aired on national TV in the late 70s and early 80s, and the league showcase event, the NBA Finals, was shown on tape delay to most of the country. The CBS Late Movie will not be presented tonight in order that we may bring you the NBA Championship Series. Still, despite the lack of network exposure, the league did grab an early foothold on cable television. It's the NBA tonight on the USA Network. In 1979, there was a deal with USA Network to air Thursday night doubleheaders and some early round playoff games. The network's reach was relatively small, but the deal put the league on the path to expanding its reach, one that would grow further in 1984 when another partnership began with fledgling Turner Sports. Watch the NBA all season long on Superstation WTBS. Step by step, the game was growing its broadcasting presence and starting to take advantage of the power of television. The league was also taking a bigger hand in promoting the game and chronicling its stories. Starting in 1982, arenas were outfitted with videotape machines to record games. In-depth features were produced for the league's partners. And with the NBA's popularity rising, a consensus was growing. NBA action is fantastic. These were the seeds of what would become NBA Entertainment, the marketing and production team that, drawing upon the history and drama of basketball, has long set a lofty standard with Emmy award-winning produced content, highlighting the game, its stars, and its greatest tales. Well, I figured eventually there'd be a movie made about the Dream Team. By the late 80s and early 90s, an influx of transcendent talent had captured the imagination of the American public, thanks in large part to what they were seeing on television. Look at that! Holy cow! Night after night, and through marquee events like All-Star Weekend... Yo! Larry Bird! ...and the draft... The Houston Rockets select Hakeem Olajuwon. Pro basketball was growing bigger than ever. Around the world, more people saw this finals than any other in our history. They saw quite a show. And in 1990, after 17 seasons with CBS, the NBA signed a long-term pact with NBC, a deal whose value would climb to more than a billion and a half dollars while taking the popularity of the league to a whole new level. At its essence, the partnership between the NBA and NBC was so successful for a simple reason, the shared vision to market the game to as broad an audience as possible. Now on NBA Inside Stuff. On Saturday mornings, Inside Stuff brought fans closer than ever to their favorite players. Let me see your best. The rising popularity of the NBA was apparent virtually everywhere on television. Why don't you meet your new bartender here, Mr. Kevin McHale? You want to take Frida Freud to the Celtics game with my ticket? We are going to the Knicks game! Michael Jordan! The God! And four words summed up everything. I love this game! I love this game! I love this game. The game was growing globally, too. Headlined by the phenomenon of the 1992 Dream Team, with broadcasters around the world embracing basketball like never before. And two years later came another watershed moment, when for the first time all seven games of the NBA Finals were broadcast live in China on CCTV. 
Meanwhile, back home, the NBA was also working to create ever more ways to answer fans' growing demand for basketball. League Pass gave viewers the ability to watch any game from around the league, wherever they live. In 1999, the NBA became the first pro sports league to launch its own 24-hour network. And at the dawn of the digital revolution, NBA.com was launched. Today, it's one of the most visited websites in the world. In 2002, another defining era began when Disney joined Turner as a new league television partner. The NBA had always recognized the power of cable television, and now that vision was boldly at the center of the strategy, with more games airing on cable than ever before. No! Today, fans consume NBA basketball in every which way possible, on television and far beyond, as the league has built one of the largest social media communities in the world. All these remarkable achievements have the same origin, the vision of a landmark figure, the Commissioner Emeritus of the NBA, who stepped aside last February after 36 years of service to the league. He knew that broadcasting will always be essential to the National Basketball Association's popularity and success and that the job of the league will always be to reach as many fans in as many places, in as many ways as anyone could imagine.